Hey there YouTube. Today I want to do a video comparison between the Baofeng UV5R and the Yaesu FT4XR. Now I'm comparing these two radios today because these are both entry-level radios. The Baofeng has become infamous amongst new hams as well as the prepping community as kind of the entry-level or gateway radio that a lot of people tend to buy as their first radio. There's a lot of reasons to this, but there's also a lot of hate with this particular radio. And I think some of that has to do with price envy and as well as some of the manufacturing issues that Bofangs tend to have. A lot of the Bofangs do tend to have spurious emissions, which it, without getting too far into it is not really a good thing. Not every Bofang has that problem, but it is prevalent enough where a lot of people don't like the radio for that. I'll link down in the description uh, a video talking more about the spurious emissions and the Bofangs, uh, just to kind of give you a way to research it on your own. The other th reason I think a lot of hams don't like these radios is that a lot of people buy them who are not licensed and don't really know what they truly are and what they're doing with them. and inadvertently sometimes cause harmful interference. Now, because that radio is so cheap, it has actually forced other manufacturers such as Yesu to come out and produce radios like the FT4X, which is a much cheaper entry-level radio that a lot more people are going to be buying because you're not going to want to drop $400 when you're just starting out in a new hobby. The point of this video is to do a price comparison between the two radios and see how much it's going to cost you to get into ham radio. Now, I will be doing a, uh, a second video in the future about the cost to get licensed because um, there is some new information out for that and, you know, kind of go over some different things. But I felt like doing the equipment side of that first. How I'm going to do this is kind of in three steps. Step one is going to be the radio plus your kind of day one upgrade, which is um, going to be their antenna. Because typically in the ham radio world, the first thing you do to a new radio is you take off the stock rubber ducky antenna, put it on a shelf somewhere, and you immediately put on a better aftermarket antenna. On Step one, I'm going to include the cost of the radio and include the cost of an antenna that you can actually run on both radios. Then step two will be the accessories that most people tend to get for their HT radios. Um, I will like to point out now, none of these prices include shipping costs or taxes because that's going to vary depending on where you live. I will be using Amazon for everything involving the Bofang. And for the Yesu, I'll be using everything involving the ham radio outlet store. Now, on the Bofang side, I will be using Bofang store on Amazon, not BTEC, with one exception, and that's the programming cable. Now, BTEC is the official importer for Bofang radios. They no longer offer the UV5R. You have to go to the Bofang store on Amazon in order to get the UV5R. Now, I'm not going to get into the reasons behind that, but the Bofang store, Bofang store on Amazon is considered the knockoff version of those radios. Just so kind of you're aware, there's some weird stuff involving the, the Baofeng radios. The Asus are the Asus. There's, there's no problem with that. I'm just using ham radio outlet. You can use whatever um, uh, source for these radios that you want. You can also get them on Amazon, um, but typically for ham radio stuff, depending on what it is, you're gonna pay more on Amazon for various reasons than you would go into a place like ham radio outlet or like DX engineering. It, it all just depends. So let's get started on the price comparison. Up first is the UV5R. The radio currently on Amazon is $34.99. The Yesu is currently $89.95. I will also note that these prices are current as of March of 2021. 
So the antenna I'm going to recommend here is uh, the Signal Stuff Signal Stick, which you can buy from SignalStuff.com. These antennas run about $20. The one shown here has the SMA female connector, which uh, works directly with these radios. Signal Stuff also offers different adapters, so you can adapt one of their antennas to a different style connector. If you wanted, you could order something like a BNC connector and just use their adapter to connect to the radio. Signal Stuff is actually a really good company. Um, I, they're a US produced uh, antenna and the proceeds from the antennas go towards funding hamstudy.org, which is a great uh, organization that's uh, heavily involved in helping people get licensed. So if you haven't checked them out, check out Signal Stuff, Signal Stick, as well as hamstudy.org if you're trying to get your uh, uh, license. The antenna runs about $20. Not a huge investment, and uh, that antenna will far outperform this stock antenna. When you combine both prices on the radio and the antenna, the Bofang UV5R is $55. The Yesu FT... 4X is $110, so about double the cost at this point in time. Now let's move on to other accessories. So the first accessory we're going to talk about is the battery. Now for the UV5R I went with the extended battery which is $17.99 currently. On the FT4X I went with the standard battery because they do not make a uh, extended battery as far as I can find for the FT4X and that was $35.95. The next accessory we'll talk about is the shoulder mic or the hand mic. These microphones plug into your radio and then allows you to operate the radio while it's still on your belt or some other configuration. For the Bofang it was $8.43 um, depending on which one you buy and where you find it, I've seen them as low as $5 and sometimes 10, 10 to 15 depending on which one you buy. That one particular was $8.43. The Yesu microphone was $24.95. Up next is the programming cables. Now, the programming cable uh, for the Bofang, I would recommend using the one from BTEC. Um, it is $20. It's the same cost as the Yesu programming cable. The reason I would say use something from BTEC is because it is one of the things that a lot of people have problems with is that the programming cables, the cheap knockoff ones just don't work most of the time. Now the nice thing is both radios can be programmed with the uh, Chirp programming software which is a free program. I'll link that down in the description as well. Um, and it actually makes quick work of programming both of these radios. That brings us to the total cost for the accessories. And for the Bofang accessories, you're looking at about $48. On the ASU side of things, you're looking at about $80. Now, of course, that doesn't count the cost of the antennas. Overall, the Bofang will cost you about $107 with all the accessories listed. And the Yesu will cost you about $196. Now, is that price difference worth it? Let's check out some of the specifications and you can decide. Now, both of these radios are dual band. They both work on 2 meters as well as the 70 centimeter band. The UV5R is 4 watts max. The FT4X is 5 watts max. The UV5R only has... A high and a low setting. Low is 1 watt, high is 4 watts. The FTX4 has a high, medium, and low. On the low side of things you can transmit using half a watt of power. You can step that up to the medium level at 2.5 watts or to the high side of the 5 watt maximum output. The frequency ranges on both radios are the same. Now they will both receive from 136 to 147 megahertz as well as the 400 to 480 megahertz. The Bofangs were in a lot of trouble because out of the box they could transmit in that entire range which would put them out of band for being an amateur radio. They can transmit on frequencies like FRS, GMRS, 
and most of the public safety frequencies. Now, you can do something to the Yaesu FT4X that we refer to as the Mars modification. And that will give you the expanded transmitting ability that, in, that the Bofangs used to have. The nice thing about it is it is actually just a series of key presses and punching in a code on the radio that will unlock it. There are some other YouTubers that have really good videos explaining how to do that. So if you're interested in something like that, just Google Yesu FT4X Mars mod and you'll be able to find that. The reason you would do something like that is to be able to transmit out of band during an emergency. During normal times, it's not legal to transmit outside of the ham bands on an amateur radio. Even if you have a GMRS license or just using FRS frequencies, still it is a FCC violation. I'm not going to get into my thoughts on that, but that is just what the law says. Moving on, both of these radios are capable of dual watch, meaning you can be set up to transmit on one frequency, receive that frequency, and then also receive a second frequency. The speaker on the UV5R is 0.7 watts of power, and the speaker on the Yesu is, a, is one full watt of power, which just gives it a little bit clearer and stronger audio. Both of these radios have scanning abilities for both the VFO and the memory. The UV5R has 128 memory capacity, while the FT4X has 200. The next item is scannable memory banks, which is a awesome feature. And the nice thing about the scannable memory banks is I can have all the memories programmed into the radio and set it up so I can scan bank one, bank two, or bank three. Um, the Yesu has 10 different banks of memories you can scan. And the nice thing is you can have it set up so you can only scan public safety, only scan amateur frequencies, or some combination thereof. Another thing you could do with it is if you were traveling, you could set it up so the memory banks are, you know, different areas. So if you're, you know, traveling, you want to have all the repeaters near Rapid City, South Dakota, you can have a, a bank of memories set up for that. The Bofang does not do that, unfortunately. The Yesu has built-in weather channels, so there is a, you can go into, into it where you can pull up your NOAA weather. The Baofeng does not have that feature, but you can just program the weather channels into your regular memory and still get them that way. The battery life on the Bofang UV5R is advertised at 12 hours. And on the FT4X, it is 15 hours. Now, of course, with the Bofang, with the extended battery, you would probably get a longer use out of that. Now, the duty cycle for these radios, and this is kind of how they go off of also how long the batteries will last, for the Bofang is three minutes of receiving, three minutes of transmitting, and 54 minutes in standby. For the FT4X, it is five minutes of receiving, five minutes of transmitting, and 90 minutes of standby. The FT4X has an auto power off feature. The UV5R does not. And the last difference I'll talk about is the radio clone ability. And what this ability is, is you have to have a different programming cable, but you can literally program the FT4X, you can take it and copy your radio program from one radio to the next which is great for field work and things like that if you know you meet up with a friend and you want to make sure your radios are synced up you just plug in the cable and go through the cloning procedure and you can automatically copy your radio's program over to somebody else's it's also kind of handy if you bought multiple radios and needed to program them all quickly it eliminates the need for a computer the uv5r does not have that ability as far as i'm aware now, there are some other differences between the radios, but these were just the ones that I uh, felt like were the pertinent ones. Overall, both radios have advantages and disadvantages. Honestly, with the, the Bofang, the biggest advantage of it is the price. It's a $35 radio versus a $90 radio. So all day long, you can buy almost three of the the Bofangs for one of the Yesu radio cost. And it's 
kind of up to what you need to do with the radios on how much you wanted to spend. If you want a much better quality radio, I would highly recommend the FT4X. Now, if you are looking for something for emergency communications and they're mainly going to sit on a shelf or you're really clumsy and you break your radios all the time, then the Bofang might be worth looking into. Again, I feel that you'll get a much better value out of the Yaesu, but, you know, it all depends on your budget. Now, I highly also recommend that you use the radios as much as possible before an event or an emergency. That way you're familiar with the controls and menu options and how they perform. That's all I have for you today. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please uh, give me a like, consider subscribing, and uh, if you have any feedback, please leave it in the comments below. Until next time, 73.